Perfect timing, Professor. If you don't mind, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. It's in regard to sword training. Not for myself, but... Well... To be honest, I've been teaching swordsmanship to the orphans at the monastery for a while now. I must agree. Frankly, I'm not great with children. Some of them saw me sparring with the knights one day. They started pestering me to teach them. They were so earnest, I couldn't help but oblige. There's much I wish to show them, but due to my own studies and training, I'm afraid my time is rather limited. Which brings me to my favor. Your swordsmanship is unmatched. I hate to ask this of you, but... Would you consider lending me a hand? Thank you, truly. I am in your debt, and I always repay my debts, I'll have you know. All of these children lost their families and homes to war or illness. This may sound a bit arrogant, but I feel it's my responsibility to help them. I lost my parents without warning, too. In that way, we're the same. In Dusker, I lost my father, stepmother, and closest friends. I didn't have many allies at the castle after that. In truth, I had only to do for companionship. I'm afraid not. My birth mother fell ill and died shortly after I was born. And my uncle... Suffice to say, we don't get along. Ah, but there were those outside the castle walls I was close to, such as Rodrigue. <laughs> Pardon my rudeness. I meant Lord Rodrigue. He is my father's old companion and the father of Felix. On the occasions he would visit the capital, he'd take me out hunting or on long horse rides. While Dudu is like a brother to me, Rodrigue is more like a second father. It might sound ridiculous, but he's the kind of man I hope to become one day. Someone who helps others. Someone who can reach out and save a lost soul. Oh, please accept my apologies for boring you with my life story. In any case, don't forget your promise, Professor. I'm counting on you. Thank you for your help the other day, Professor. Please, allow me to express my gratitude by taking you to dinner. Nonsense. Your guidance was magnificent. Just what I'd expect from a professor at this esteemed academy. I've studied swordsmanship for some time, but your mercenary skills are something else entirely. Speaking of which, there's another question I must ask you. Were you reconciled with the reality of battle from your first foray? With the killing part, I mean? I see. No. I do not carry that burden well. I doubt that will change, no matter how many years come and go. The first time I led on the battlefield, I was sent to quell a rebellion in the West. It was not a difficult fight. The enemy was not well trained and their morale was low. A swing of the lance and your opponent falls. A flash of your blade and a path opens up. That's the sort of battle it was. Easy, right? The noble family from that area sought to seize the throne after my father's untimely death. The leader of the rebel army was defeated and the rebellion quelled. This was at the height of the post-war period. I recall coming across a dead soldier's body. He was clutching a locket, and inside was a lock of golden hair. I don't know to whom it belonged. His wife? His daughter? Mother? Lover? I'll never know. He was a soldier. An enemy. Someone we had cut down without hesitation. But in that moment, I realized he was also a real person, just like the rest of us. Of course, we cannot stand idly by and allow anyone to commit senseless acts of violence. Yet, in dispensing what we call justice, we take the lives of cherished family members, beloved friends. Killing is part of the job, but even so, there are times when I'm chilled to the bone by the depravity of my own actions. Is it? Perhaps you're right. I pray that you are. Professor, may I speak freely? When we first met, 
I thought of you as someone who felt no strong feelings about killing your enemies. I could never trust someone who kills without batting an eye. My heart won't allow it. But after speaking with you and getting to know you better, I can see you're not like that. Now I know, with all my heart, that I can trust you. Thank you for that. Sleep evades me, so I thought I'd get in some extra training. I was just about to finish. Perhaps it is the gloomy weather, but I am feeling the sting of wounds that should have healed long ago. The injury I got when that girl stabbed me after the battle at Gronder. Her eyes were filled with revenge, just as mine once were. I don't know, but I have a guess. Ah, I suppose I haven't told you about that yet. I was attacked inside the monastery the other day. It caused quite the uproar. The ones who attacked me were some of the youths we taught swordsmanship to once upon a time. Of course, I could capture the lot of them with my eyes closed. It seems they were raised by a group of thieves we put down five years ago. I heard Lady Rhea took custody of them, claiming that the children were innocent. I have taken so many lives, and with each one I face hatred. During the last five years especially, my life was not so different from that of a wild beast, and that young girl's brother. At some point I must have... <sighs> that is why I thought it only natural that someone would retaliate someday. Because I hated, because I stole, and because I killed. But with those children, it's different. We drew our blades with the best of intentions, only to hurt them in the end. I suppose this is yet another thing we will just have to live with. Yes. As one who chose to fight, it is my responsibility to confront this anguish and the true nature of war until the day my life comes to an end. Perhaps. You know, Professor, there is something that I only recently realized. I never knew it could be so comforting to have someone standing by my side. Come now, my friend. You must stop staying up so late. Tomorrow is yet another early morning. Then again, I know that matters little. You cannot sleep, can you? <laughs> Neither can I, of course. I... I want you to know I am sorry for making you do so much when your battle wounds aren't even completely healed yet. Do not worry about me. My shoulder has healed nicely. I still have some numbness in my hand, but it should not hinder me too much. It is a lovely night, is it not? How many years has it been since I was kept awake by hopes for the future, rather than by nightmares of the past? I have had the same nightmare for nine long years. A nightmare in which I am constantly tormented by those who have died. They ask me why I have not avenged them, why I got to live, yet they had to die. No matter how many corpses I piled up for them, in the end, their voices only grew louder. Voices loathing me, calling out to me, their inescapable death cries ringing in my ears, clinging to my soul. Even now, I can always hear them. I am certain I will be hearing them until the day I die, but I will not cover my ears. I will go on living, and their voices will serve as a warning, as a king, and as a wretch who claimed countless lives. I will build a kingdom where the people can live in peace. I am sure she would laugh and call such talk foolish, but I wish to change this world in my own way. Well, your grace, things will be busy from now on. Our first order of business is tomorrow's coronation. Once a professor and student, 
now an archbishop and a king. How very far we have come. That is true. <laughs> to me, you will always be the one who guided me so kindly. My ally through all. My beloved... Yes, my beloved. Listen, there is something I wish to give you before the coronation. Give me your hand. Please, I beg of you, say something. If you do not wish to accept it, please, just tell me. If so, I will face the truth and walk away. What is this? Yes, I see. Right. In that case, let us exchange them, shall we? Your hands. Now that I hold them within my own, I see how small and fragile they are. These hands that have saved me countless times. Thank you, my beloved. Your kind, warm hands. May they cling to my own forevermore.